The politicization of science is the manipulation of science for political gain. It occurs when government, business, or advocacy groups use legal or economic pressure to influence the findings of scientific research or the way it is disseminated, reported or interpreted. The politicization of science may also negatively affect academic and scientific freedom. Historically, groups have conducted various campaigns to promote their interests in defiance of scientific consensus, and in an effort to manipulate public policy. On the other hand, policy makers are required to take timely action regardless of the raging debates and or apparent credibility of alternative viewpoints. Politics cannot be completely divorced from policy. Overview. Many factors can act as facets of the politicization of science. These can range, for example, from populist anti-intellectualism and perceived threats to religious belief to postmodernist subjectivism and fear for business interests. Politicization occurs as scientific information is presented with emphasis on the uncertainty associated with the scientific evidence. The emphasis capitalizes on the lack of consensus, which influences the way the studies are perceived. Chris Mooney describes how this point is sometimes intentionally ignored as a part in Orwellian tactic. Organizations and politicians seek to disclaim all discussion on some issues as the more probable conclusion is still uncertain as opposed to conclusions are most scientifically likely in order to further discredit scientific studies. Tactics such as shifting conversation, failing to acknowledge facts, and capitalizing on doubt of scientific consensus have been used to gain more attention for views that have been undermined by scientific evidence. Merchants of doubt, ideology-based interest groups that claim expertise on scientific issues, have run successful disinformation campaigns in which they highlight the inherent uncertainty of science to cast doubt on scientific issues such as human-caused climate change, even though the scientific community has reached virtual consensus that humans play a role in climate change. William R. Freudenberg and colleagues have written about politicization of science as a rhetorical technique and states that it is an attempt to shift the burden of proof in an argument. He offers the example of cigarette lobbyists opposing laws that would discourage smoking. The lobbyists trivialize evidence as uncertain, emphasizing lack of conclusion. Freudenberg concludes that politicians and lobby groups are too often able to make successful efforts to argue for full scientific certainty before a regulation can be said to be justified and maintain that what is needed is a balanced approach that carefully considers the risks of both type 1 and type 2 errors in a situation while noting that scientific conclusions are always tentative president of the american council on science and health hank campbell and microbiologist alex barazzo have described Feel-good fallacies used in politics, where politicians frame their positions in a way that makes people feel good about supporting certain policies even when scientific evidence shows there is no need to worry or there is no need for dramatic change on current programs. They have claimed that progressives have had these kinds of issues with policies involving genetically modified foods, vaccination, overpopulation, use of animals in research, nuclear energy, and other topics. Politicization by advocacy groups Global warming Both mainstream climatologists and their critics have accused each other of politicizing the science behind climate change. There is a scientific consensus that global surface temperatures have increased in recent decades and that the trend is caused primarily by human induced emissions of greenhouse gases. In 1991, a U.S. corporate coalition, including the National Coal Association, the Western Fuels Association, and Edison Electrical Institute, created a public relations organization called the Information Council on the Environment. ICE. ICE launched a $500,000 advertising campaign to, in ICE's own words, reposition global warming as theory, not fact. Critics of industry groups have charged that the claims about a global warming controversy are part of a deliberate effort to reduce the impact any international treaty, such as the Kyoto Protocol, might have on their business interests. In June 2005, John Vidal, environment editor of The Guardian, asserted the existence of U.S. State Department papers showing that the Bush administration thanked Exxon executives for the company's active involvement 
in helping to determine climate change policy, including the U.S. stance on Kyoto. Input from the industry advocacy group Global Climate Coalition was also a factor. In 2006, Guardian columnist George Monbiot reported that according to data found in official Exxon documents, 124 organizations have taken money from ExxonMobil or worked closely with those that have, and that these organizations take a consistent line on climate change, that the science is contradictory, the scientists are split, environmentalists are charlatans, liars or lunatics, and if governments took action to prevent global warming, they would be endangering the global economy for no good reason. The findings these organizations dislike are labeled junk science. The findings they welcome are labeled sound science. The selective use of data Cherry picking is identified as a notable form of scientific abuse by the Pacific Institute, an organization created to provide independent research and policy analysis on issues at the intersection of development, environment, and security. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Intelligent design. The intelligent design movement associated with the Discovery Institute attempts to defeat the materialist worldview represented by the theory of evolution in favor of a science consonant with christian and theistic convictions the discovery institute portrays evolution as a theory in crisis with scientists criticizing evolution and that fairness and equal time requires educating students about the controversy one of the most reliable and empirically tested theories in science is that all forms of life on Earth are related by common descent with modification. Accordingly, any controversial aspects of evolution are a matter of religion and politics, not science. The 2005 ruling in the Dover trial, Kitzmiller v. Dover Area School District, where the claims of intelligent design proponents were considered by a United States federal court concluded that intelligent design is not science, that it cannot uncouple itself from its creationist, and thus religious, antecedents," and concluded that the school district's promotion of it therefore violated the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. In 2006 the scientific journal Science published survey finding that the U.S. ranks second from last in acceptance of the theory of evolution among 34 developed countries surveyed. The article said, the Acceptance of evolution is lower in the United States than in Japan or Europe, largely because of widespread fundamentalism and the politicization of science in the United States. Tobacco and cancer By the mid-1950s there was a scientific consensus that smoking promotes lung cancer, but the tobacco industry fought the findings, both in the public eye and within the scientific community. Tobacco companies funded think tanks and lobbying groups, started health reassurance campaigns, ran advertisements in medical journals, and researched alternate explanations for lung cancer, such as pollution, asbestos and even pet birds. Denying the case against tobacco was closed. They called for more research as a tactic to delay regulation. John Horgan, notes a rhetoric tactic that has been used by tobacco companies. It is summarized in a line that appeared in a confidential memo from a tobacco company, in 1969, when they sought to cast doubt on evidence that supports smoking causes cancer. It read, doubt is our product since it is the best means of competing with the body of fact that exists in the mind of the general public. It is also the means of establishing a controversy. Eugenics Nazi Germany under Adolf Hitler was well known for eugenics programs which attempted to maintain a «pure» German race through a series of programs that ran under the banner of racial hygiene. The Nazis manipulated scientific research in Germany, by forcing some scholars to emigrate, and by allocating funding for research based on ideological rather than scientific merit. In the early 20th century, eugenics enjoyed substantial international support, from leading politicians and scientists. 
The first International Congress of Eugenics in 1912 was supported by many prominent persons, including, its president Leonard Darwin, the son of Charles Darwin, Honorary Vice President Winston Churchill, then First Lord of the Admiralty and future Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Auguste Farrell, famous Swiss pathologist, Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone, among other prominent people. The level of support for eugenics research by the Nazis prompted an American eugenics advocate to seek an expansion of the American program program, with the complaint that, "...the Germans are beating us at our own game." There was a strong connection between American and Nazi eugenics research. Nazis based their eugenics program on the United States programs of forced sterilization, especially on the eugenics laws that had been enacted in California. <laughs> <laughs> Government politicization Soviet Union In the Soviet Union, scientific research was under strict political control. A number of research areas were declared «bourgeois pseudoscience» and forbidden. This has led to significant setbacks for the Soviet science, notably in biology due to ban on genetics see Lysenkoism, and in computer science, which drastically influenced the Soviet economy and technology. United States The General Social Survey of 1974 recorded that conservatives had the highest rates of trust in science between the three major political demographics, conservatives, liberals, and moderates. This study was repeated annually between 1972 through 1994, and biannually from 1994 until 2010. In 2010 when the same study was repeated, conservatives' trust rates had decreased from 49% to 38%, moderates from 45% to 40%, and liberals staying relatively stable, rising slightly from 48% to 50%. The study by Gordon Gauchet, which investigates time trends in the public trust of science in the United States, suggests that the increase of distrust of conservatives can be attributed to the two cultural shifts. The first was during the post-Reagan era when the New Right emerged, and the second during the G.W. Bush era when the NR intensified and conservatives commenced the War on Science. Barack Obama and other politicians, since Bush's presidency, have expressed their concerns with the politicization of science in both the public and government sphere. In 2011, during his State of the Union speech, Obama discussed his dissatisfaction of the relationships between organized science, private economic interests, and the government. The data collected in this study reveals the public trust in science, the public confidence in science, and the predicted probabilities between liberals and conservatives. The survey examines variables including gender, ethnicity, level of education, income, religion, age, political party preference, political demographics, and changes over time. Conclusively, the empirical findings of this study have shown that that although the distrust of conservatives has increased over time, the overall public trust in science has not changed since the 1970s. Topic. George W. Bush administration In 2004, the Denver Post reported that the George W. Bush administration has installed more than 100 top officials who were once lobbyists, attorneys or spokespeople for the industries they oversee. At least 20 of these former industry advocates help their agencies write, shape or push for policy shifts that benefit their former industries. They knew which changes to make because they had pushed for them as industry advocates. Also in 2004, the scientific advocacy group Union of Concerned Scientists issued a report, Scientific Integrity in Policymaking, an investigation into the Bush administration's misuse of science which charged the following, a growing number of scientists, policy makers, and technical specialists both inside and outside the government allege that the current Bush administration has suppressed or distorted the scientific analyses of federal agencies to bring these results in line with administration policy. In addition, these experts contend that irregularities in the appointment of scientific advisors and advisory panels are threatening to upset the legally mandated balance of these bodies. 
A petition, signed on February 18, 2004, by more than 9,000 scientists, including 49 Nobel laureates and 63 National Medal of Science recipients, followed the report. The petition stated, when scientific knowledge has been found to be in conflict with its political goals, the administration has often manipulated the process through which science enters into its decisions. This has been done by placing people who are professionally unqualified or who have clear conflicts of interest in official posts and on scientific advisory committees, by disbanding existing advisory committees, by censoring and suppressing reports by the government's own scientists, and by simply not seeking independent scientific advice. Other administrations have, on occasion, engaged in such practices, but not so systematically nor on so wide a front. Furthermore, in advocating policies that are not scientifically sound, the administration has sometimes misrepresented scientific knowledge and misled the public about the implications of its policies. The same year, Francesca Griffo, executive director of the Union of Concerned Scientists Scientific Integrity Program, stated. We have reports that stay in draft form and don't get out to the public. We have reports that are changed. We have reports that are ignored and overwritten. In response to criticisms, President Bush in 2006 unveiled a campaign in his State of the Union address to promote scientific research and education to ensure American competitiveness in the world, vowing to double the federal commitment to the most critical basic research programs in the physical sciences over the next 10 years. Topic. Surgeon General Richard Carmona, the first Surgeon General appointed by President George W. Bush, publicly accused the administration in July 2007 of political interference and muzzling him on key issues like embryonic stem cell research. Anything that doesn't fit into the political appointee's ideological, theological or political agenda is often ignored, marginalized or simply buried. Carmona testified, although he did not make personal accusations, the Washington Post reported on July 29 that the official who blocked at least one of Carmona's reports was William R. Steiger. <laughs> <laughs> Food and Drug Administration in July 2006 the Union of Concerned Scientists UCS released survey results that demonstrate pervasive political influence of science at the Food and Drug Administration FDA. Of the 997 FDA scientists who responded to the survey, nearly one-fifth said that they have been asked, for non-scientific reasons, to inappropriately exclude or alter technical information or their conclusions in a FDA scientific document. This is the third survey Union of Concerned Scientists has conducted to examine inappropriate interference with science at federal agencies. The Department of Health and Human Services also conducted a survey addressing the same topic which generated similar findings. According to USA Today, a survey of Food and Drug Administration scientists by public employees for environmental responsibility and the Union of Concerned Scientists found that many scientists have been pressured to approve or reject new drugs despite their scientific findings concerns. In July 2006, the Union of Concerned Scientists released survey results that they said, "...demonstrate pervasive political influence of science," at the Food and Drug Administration. United States Department of the Interior On May 1, 2007, Deputy Assistant Secretary at the United States Department of the Interior Julie McDonald resigned after the Interior Department Inspector General, Honorable Earl E. Devaney, reported that McDonald broke federal rules by giving non-public, internal government documents to oil industry and property rights groups, and manipulated scientific findings to favor Bush policy goals and assist land developers. On November 29, 2007, another report by Devaney found that McDonald could have also benefited financially from a decision she was involved with to remove the Sacramento split-tail fish from the federal endangered species list. McDonald's conduct violated the Code of Federal Regulations CFR under 5 CFR Section 2635.703, Use of Non-Public Information, and 5 CFR Section 2635.101, Basic Obligation of Public Service. 
McDonald resigned a week before a House Congressional Oversight Committee was to hold a hearing on accusations that she had violated the Endangered Species Act, censored science and mistreated staff of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Topic. Climate change In December 2007, the Christian Science Monitor reported that at least since 2003, and especially after Hurricane Katrina, the George W. Bush administration broadly attempted to control which climate scientists could speak with reporters, as well as edited scientists' congressional testimony on climate science and key legal opinions. Those who have studied organizations that set up to delay action and manufacture uncertainty about the well-established scientific consensus have divided their tactics into three steps. First, deny that there is a problem. Second, make the case that there are benefits involved. And third, insist that there is nothing that can be done. In a study, The Legitimacy of Environmental Scientists in the Public Sphere, by Gordon Gauchet, Timothy O'Brien, and Oriel Morosa, the researchers conclude that attitudes about environmental scientists as policy advisors are highly politicized. Their results demonstrate that, to be perceived by the public as a reputable policy advisor, the public's perception of their integrity and understanding weigh more strongly than their agreement with scientific consensus. Topic. Waxman Report. In August 2003, United States, Democratic Congressman Henry A. Waxman and the staff of the Government Reform Committee released a report concluding that the administration of George W. Bush had politicized science and sex education. The report accuses the administration of modifying performance measures for abstinence-based programs to make them look more effective. The report also found that the Bush administration had appointed Dr. Joseph McIlhaney, a prominent advocate of abstinence-only program, to the advisory committee to the director of the Centers for Disease Control. According to the report, information about comprehensive sex education was removed from the CDC's website. Other issues considered for removal included agricultural pollution, the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, and breast cancer. The report found that a National Cancer Institute website has been changed to reflect the administration view that there may be a risk of breast cancer associated with abortions. The website was updated after protests and now holds that no such risk has been found in recent, well designed studies. Topic. Abortion breast cancer hypothesis The abortion breast cancer hypothesis is the belief that induced abortions increase the risk of developing breast cancer. This belief is in contrast to the scientific consensus that there is no evidence suggesting that abortions can cause breast cancer. Despite the scientific community rejecting the hypothesis, many pro-life advocates continue to argue that a link between abortions and breast cancer exists, in an effort to influence public policy and opinion to further restrict abortions and discourage women from having abortions. While historically a controversial hypothesis, the debate now is almost entirely political rather than scientific. The most notable example of the politicization of this topic was the modification of the National Cancer Institute (NCI) fact sheet by the George W. Bush administration from concluding no link to a more ambiguous assessment regarding the abortion breast cancer hypothesis, despite the NCI's scientifically based assessment to the contrary. United States House Science Subcommittee on Oversight In January 2007, the U.S. House Committee on Science, Space and Technology announced the formation of a new subcommittee, the Science Subcommittee on Oversight, which handles investigative and oversight activities on matters covering the committee's entire jurisdiction. The subcommittee has authority to look into a whole range of important issues, particularly those concerning manipulation of scientific data at federal agencies. In an interview, subcommittee chairman Rep. Brad Miller pledged to investigate scientific integrity concerns under the Bush administration. Miller noted that there were multiple reports in the media of the Bush administration's manipulation of science to advance his political agenda, corrupt advisory panels, and minimize scientific research with federal funds. Miller, as part of the House Committee of Science and Technology, collected evidence of interference with scientific integrity by Bush's political appointees. Topic: <laughs> Donald Trump administration. 
The issue of politicized science surfaced again during the 2016 United States presidential campaign by then Republican candidate Donald Trump. Trump stated his intention to strip NASA's Earth Science Division of its funding, a move that The Guardian writes, "...would mean the elimination of NASA's world-renowned research into temperature, ice, clouds and other climate phenomena." <laughs> Dedications and holidays On January 22, 2013, New Jersey Representative Rush D. Holt Jr., a Quaker Christian and nuclear physicist, introduced a resolution to the United States Congress designating February 12, 2013 Charles Darwin's 204th birthday as Darwin Day in order to recognize the importance of sciences in the betterment of humanity. Topic scholarly studies of the politics of science The politicization of science is a subset of a broader topic, the politics of science, which has been studied by scholars in a variety of fields, including most notably science and technology studies, history of science, political science, and the sociology of science, knowledge, and technology. Increasingly in recent decades, these fields have examined the process through which science and technology are shaped. Some of the scholarly work in this area is reviewed in the Handbook of Science and Technology Studies 1995, 2008, a collection of literature reviews published by the Society for Social Studies of Science. There is an annual award for books relevant to the politics of science given by the Society for Social Studies of Science called the Rachel Carson Prize. See also